On today's episode of In The Know, we'll be going back to basics and getting an overview of the money out process in QuickBooks Online with Pro Advisor Trainer and my friend, Dan Luthi. The training he'll present is an excerpt from the Expenses and Vendors course found in our newly reimagined QuickBooks Online Level 1 certification. In this training, Dan is going to walk you through an overview of the money out workflow, using purchase orders, manually recording expenses, entering and paying bills, and uploading receipts and bills. So with that, let me welcome Dan. Dan, thanks for being here. Hey, thank you so much, Jacqueline. I'm really excited to be here. Um, this is one of my favorite things to talk about. I don't know why I always get brought into the AP side of things, um, but I really do. I really enjoy talking about it and I really enjoy in talking about what we're doing. So as you mentioned, we're going to dive right in um, and talk about some of these key functions. Uh, of course, the overview of the workflow, um, as you mentioned, and of course, we're diving into POs. POs, everybody wants to know how they work, how, what the best relationship is with it. Um, and then of course, how that ties into recording expenses and paying bills. And then of course, last but not least, making sure that we get those attachments and documentations in place. So let's go ahead and start talking about our workflow. So as you guys can see in this workflow, um, our real initial question is going to be talking about when you actually pay the bill and how that relates to the rest of the workflow. Um, if there's a yes or there's a no, there's always going to be a consideration around uh, whether you should use a purchase order or not. Um, you can use it on both situations. It's not a requirement, but definitely a great option. Um, if you are in a situation where you did pay it directly at that point in time, uh, a purchase order can be entered. Um, and then we would use what is called an expense to record those transactions specifically into our financial system. If the answer is no, we're going to receive it as a bill which allows us to be able to post it to our accounts payable account, and then we'll be able to move on from there into paying the bills and reporting everything after the fact. Um, and then of course, last but not least, documentation is a very valuable portion and very valuable part of this workflow in making sure that we have all the data and all the historical detail to be able to make sure we can reference it in the future. Um, the nice thing about that is whether it's a PO, an expense or a bill, documentation can be uploaded into every single one of those transactions within QuickBooks. So let's go ahead and dive actually right now into what happens with uh, when the situations where a client pays immediately. This is focused on, as you guys know, more of around a cash-based accounting process, meaning that cash is being affected immediately or a credit card transaction is occurring and we're reporting that directly onto the financial statements. In the opposite situation, if the answer is no, we're actually affecting, of course, accounts payable. No money is moving out of the organization at this point in time. And this is what's supported around what we call, of course, is an accrual basis. Um, now let's dive into talking a little bit more about purchase orders. Uh, there's so much that can be go on, uh, go along with the, uh, purchase orders, but I think one of the most important parts of talking about purchase orders is really let's start with what a purchase order is. A purchase order is a non-accounting transaction or a non-posting transaction within QuickBooks that you're providing a specific request for products or services to your vendors that in the future you're promising to pay them uh, for those goods and services. In this situation, of course, this is a way for you and your internal team to keep an eye on what potentially is coming or where future expenses is going to be. It provides you with the opportunity to start projecting and planning from a cash flow standpoint, or also locking in your, your price points uh, that you're buying that those goods and services along the way with. Um, the purchase orders are available in both the plus and the advanced subscriptions. Uh, so if you do need these or would like to consider using them, make sure that you, uh, you double check on what subscription or what version you have of QuickBooks Online uh, to ensure that's available for you. This also, just as a note, gives you the ability to be able to include quantities, the agreed upon price, as mentioned before. Um, and then also, if there's any notes or any other context you want to include, you have that to be able to, uh, to be able to post and make available to you. So, of course, step number one. You need to determine uh, what it is that you need to order. Um, are they specific inventoryable items? Is there a good or service that we are planning for that needs to be provided at a future period of time? 
purchase order should create examples of those pieces and really great uh, documentation to help with that process. Um, is the vendor going to fulfill these items based on a delivery or based on a future transaction period? Um, that helps you also too, as we mentioned before, to lock in rates, but also allow you to be able to make sure that when you do receive that invoice from the vendor, you can tie that directly to those predetermined account or price points or units uh, to be able to make sure that uh, it's documented accurately and that you're you're getting the appropriate price point. Um, along with that too, if the customer or if the vendor requests a payment immediately, Again, reminders that we can still use that uh, that PO function. We're just going to directly connect it to an expense versus add it to a bill. Um, and then, of course, on the other situations where we're going to make payments to the vendor in the future, um, we can post it as a bill, which will directly tie to that PO. Now, we definitely are going to walk through uh, some examples of that shortly. Uh, but before we dive into it, I did want to quickly reference this to everybody on why we use purchase orders. Um, we mentioned a couple of these before, but wanted to definitely deep dive into a few of them before we advanced into actually walking through the demo. Of course, number one, this really does make it easier to track these potential purchases that you have coming down the line. Um, the inventory side is a really great example of when you would use this to where you know what's to be tracked, when you, what you, ex when you expect those items to, to be delivered. Um, most vendors in those situations also require a purchase order so that they can have a committed um, buyout at that point in time. Of course, to that point, it also provides and sets an appropriate expectation for clear communication with your vendor as well as your team internally. Um, it does make your li the life easier for your vendors as well, too. Um, your vendors love having that documentation. They love having that information because it really does help them to make sure that they're matching their record side with yours. Um, and then, of course, that's going to help you manage your cash flow so much easier in that process. So let's go ahead right now and we're going to actually dive right into QuickBooks um, and uh, we're going to walk through what it's like to enter a PO. So we're going to use Craig's Landscaping as the example for this. Um, everybody knows and loves Craig's Landscaping. It gives you a really great outline of what's going on. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive into here. Up into the top left-hand corner, we always see and love that plus sign. By clicking on that, it's going to give you a drop down, of course, of all the customer-related transaction detail and all the vendors. We're focusing specifically on the vendors in this, and you're going to see purchase orders right there in the middle. So by going ahead and selecting on that, it's now going to bring up the purchase order documentation workflow. We're going to go ahead and select a vendor that ties to this. Um, A1, A1 Rental is a great example of this. We're going to put them right at the top. Um, and we're going to be buying some uh, cost of goods sold related items. So maintenance and repair is the big piece we're going to be buying from them. Um, and we're going to buy it for $800. So by doing this, as you can see, when I save this transaction, it posts this as an open purchase order which gives us the context of knowing that this is going to be, um, that this is still available. This, remember, is not a posting transaction, so it's not hitting your profit loss, it's not hitting your balance sheet. This is going to end up in a report view that you can be able to show what you have outstanding or what's to be expected. Um, in our example here, we don't have units being used with it, we're just using direct uh, purchase amounts, um, but it gives you that ability to be able to quickly um, reference that detail. The part that I absolutely love with this as well too, is you can see the copy to bill option up here in the corner. When we go ahead and select that, it's now going to move it over to a bill and keep the connection directly with our purchase order. So at this point in time, we're gonna go ahead and save this as a bill of something that needs to be paid. And then when we go back to our purchase order, you're gonna notice that our purchase order status now has changed to being closed. This gives us a great ability to be able to now know the workflow of what's going on. We can see that our expenses are being our expenses are being reported, and of course, we can see that transaction is now hitting as an open bill and is a and is ready to be paid in the at a future date. So I'm going to switch back to our slide deck real quick because we're going to dive into looking at some of the additional pieces that go along with this, potentially how we would treat this on a cash base piece, and we're going to talk about that for just a minute. So as you all remember uh, in viewing this report before, we're really going to focus specifically now that our purchase order is created directly on that expense side of things. Um, in this situation, of course, these expenses are being reported automatically. 
Um, this is money that you pay out, whether on your credit card or out of your bank account. Um, you're going to see that information or that uh, that money expel from your business immediately at that point in time. These, remember, of course, are cash based reportings. Um, and so you're going to see this as a part of your banking transactions. You're going to see the direct connection with it. Um, Let's pop back into our QuickBooks file and let's take a look at our banking tab and see if there's any transactions that match that $800 um, or if there's any transactions that we can tie directly back to that original purchase order. So here, of course, we're going to go to transaction view and then click on those bank transactions. Um, as we can see that we have a couple of transactions that are listed here. We have an A rental uh, for $800. Um, if we wanted to match that to a specific transaction or a bill, um, ideally, this, of course, is going to pop up and we're going to see that or we can go down through and do an auto match with it. Um, also, along with the lines with this, too, if we just want to directly match that or post that expense from the bank feed, we can come in here and select and add that vendor detail right here. So a one rental and then, of course, code it to those that cost of goods sold account. Um, so let's go ahead and tie that to our repairs and maintenance, much like we entered the PO and the bill before. Um, and by doing this, we're now directly reporting this right into our financial statements. Um, unlike in the situation of a bill where it's being paid in the future, in this situation, we're directly posting it so that everything references as of the date that the transaction occurred. Um, and so this is where, um, now, on these situations, of course, we're ensuring that the payee is the vendors being recorded correctly. It's matching our bank feed. Also, of course, we're selecting the, the job or the specific account it's coded to. When we go and click in, ahead and click this, what you'll notice with this process in the bank feed is that the other examples or the other expenses that were paid out to that same vendor are now going to be recommended to go to the same account. So that's going to help you so much easier go through that process of, of matching and tying those things. If you don't specifically see a transaction here or you know that it's gonna be clearing in the next couple of days, again, we can go ahead and use the plus new and click expense here at the top. Um, let's go ahead and type in A1 rental again. Um, this case, we're gonna do our cost of goods sold for our repairs and maintenance. We're gonna go ahead and as you can see actually here, we have our bill that's associated with this. Uh, if we wanted to pull that in, we can directly match it. It's going to make a bill payment for us. That's going to pull off our AP. Um, but in this situation, let's go ahead and ignore that for a moment um, and use and um, put in a transaction that's going to directly post. So we're going to ignore our expense here. Um, go ahead and tie our cost to get sold in here for $1,200. When we hit save and close, as you can see, we posted that to the checking account. Um, that is now coming into this account. Um, let's go ahead and undo this one. And we can see that that has now been tied directly to that expense. Um, because we posted it directly through our transaction here on the expense side, um, it's going to try to auto match, of course, matching the bank feed. If we were to enter this as a check, which is a similar option as the expense, it would treat it in the exact same way. All right, so we just walked through the cash-based function. Now we're gonna dive into the accrual-based view. Um, as you can see down here below, we reported this as a direct expense. In the situation where we're going to go into accrual, we have a bill that's outstanding that needs to be paid. So in this situation, we're gonna go ahead and of course, click the plus new sign, click on pay bills. We're going to make sure that we have our checking account associated with it, any potential check number, or if this happens to be an ACH that we're approving, all of that needs to be noted up here. Um, and then we're going to, of course, go ahead and pay that A1 rental bill for $800. Now, when we hit save and close, um, in some situations, we're going to see that auto match directly right here into this $800 transaction. In this situation, it's not. So we want to go ahead and manually match that so that everything matches up correctly. We know that that is going to be listed down here at the bottom of our list because it's the most recent transaction. We're gonna go ahead and select match on that one. And now we see that that transaction is matched and approved and is pushed all the way through. So by going through it on this way and by treating it from that side of things, this has given us the ability to be able to stay on top of that bill pay. It's gonna give us the ability also to make sure that the transaction's pro processing on an accrual basis as well, um, and really just making it easier for us to make sure that those directly tie or those transactions tie directly to our bank feed.
All right. So I mentioned this before. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about QuickBooks Bill Pay. Um, QuickBooks has created or Intuit has created this really wonderful product that's now embedded within QuickBooks Online that allows you to actually pay your bills directly to each of those individual vendors. And so much as we mentioned before, where we issued a paper check and we put a check number in it, in this situation, if we set up our QuickBooks Online Bill Pay solution, we're going to have the ability to be able to now go ahead and schedule those bill payments to be made directly through QuickBooks. This is, has the ability to potentially save you some time as well as offer both checks and ACH options to those vendors. Now, remember in these situations, of course, that the vendors, if it's an ACH, are going to have to set up their information on their side unless you have that context. Um, but this is a really flexible option and really gives you the ability to keep everything in one single solution. So, all right, so let's dive right back into the final part of our money out process, um, which of course goes into that documentation. Uh, documentation really is one of the most important pieces of making sure that we have good financial records, whether we're reporting on a cash basis or an accrual basis. This gives us the ability to ensure that we have, uh, that there's actual purpose that associates with those transactions. And then if there's any case where you get audited or you need to show them to another part of the organization or you're looking back at pricing, this detail will be available right for you very easily at your fingertips. So let's go ahead and show you where that's at in the QuickBooks Online. So this is actually showing referencing right within the transactional view. Um, so when we click on transactions, we have our banking function there. Uh, two, uh, two tabs over, you're going to see the receipts option. This is going to give you the ability to directly drag and drop uh, those receipts right into here. Um, also, it gives you the option to be able to directly connect to Google Drive or actually forward those receipts from an email address directly into that inbox. Um, once you do that, um, of course, and last but not least, I always forget this one. Um, if you have QuickBooks, the QuickBooks app on your phone, you have the ability to take a really clean picture of it, which here is an example of what that would look like. Um, and it's going to then utilize the OCR from that to help populate the information on that document for you. This is going to give you the ability to extract that information very cleanly and easily. It works in the situation on the receipt side to give you better visualization, plus continue with the document documentation detail for you to be able to review and look at things historically. If it doesn't bring things over for you on an automatic basis from the OCR side of things, um, you can go ahead and actually make those changes and adjustments before this is saved to your QuickBooks file. Um, all of this information is going to be covered specifically on the Bank Feed Association in your QuickBooks Online certification, um, that level one that focuses on the banking. Um, but we wanted to highlight it here so you guys had this at your fingertips um, and of course tie it right into the bill pay side of things. Dan, thank you so much. That was an amazing walkthrough of some of the highlights from QuickBooks Online Level 1 certification and expertly taught by yourself. Amazing. <laughs> no problem. Thank you so much for letting me come. I really do love talking about AP. There's so many cool things you can do with it. Um, and of course, it's all about making sure that you have control over money going out of your company uh, so you don't run out of cash. That's exactly right. And a lot more to learn in the certification program itself, which you can access right in ProAdvisor Academy. So Dan, thank you. And thank you for watching this episode. If you liked what you saw, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that you don't miss a beat. We'll catch you next time.